Rivers Cuomo is most famous for being the lead vocalist, guitarist, and lyricist of Weezer. The band has the reputation of being one of the best bands of the 90s and 2000s, creating angsty and poppy alternative rock that led the way after new metal and grunge stopped being popular. The band had their heyday very early on in their career, but they still keep on pumping out new music, keeping a closer relationship to their fans than ever before. And that's mostly because of Rivers need to stay connected and grounded. Over the years, he struggled to feel worthy of his fame and to keep on making music. But because he matured as an artist, kept up a habit of meditating and made it an effort to share, collaborate and even hang out with his fans, it seems like he's able to live an amazing life and continue to do what he loves. Let's take a closer look. Rivers Cuomo was born in New York City in 1970, but his family moved to Pomfret, Connecticut shortly after. He vividly remembers how the family lived right by an ashram temple. Both his parents were seekers of truth and decided to pursue a life of Hinduistic beliefs and practices. And so, Rivers grew up participating in meditation sessions on a daily basis. After attending a private school at the ashram for his first five school years, his parents decided to send him to a public school instead. His friends had the impression that Rivers and his family were hippies. After all, they were way more spiritual and Eastern-inspired than most Americans at the time. But in his teenage years, he became something quite different from a hippie. Rivers moved to Santa Monica and Hollywood. Hair metal was still a big part of the scene during that time, and Rivers was following the trend. Long hair, dark clothes, sweet picking and palm muting were all included in his image at the time. Believe it or not, he even played in an Ingwie Malmsteen cover band. He was a full-blooded shredder. Metallica, Judas Priest, Our Maiden and Slayer were all some of his biggest inspirations at the time. But he wouldn't stay a metalhead for too long though. After he was introduced to bands like Pixies, The Velvet Underground, The Beach Boys and others, he took a U-turn. And when he formed Weezer with his friends in 92, his music taste definitely impacted the type of music he wanted to create himself. The band name, Weezer, was something River's father, Frank, who used to call him as a toddler. Frank left Rivers and his wife very early on when Rivers was just three or four years old. And there would be years in between each time he would see them again. It's clear to see that Rivers was hurt by his father's absence when you look at the lyrics that he wrote. Say It Ain't So is one of the best examples of this, as he mentioned in an interview that this song was about his father and his stepfather. Years later, it seems like he developed a better relationship with his biological father. Frank, who's now a bishop, often invites Rivers to his church to see him preach. Rivers has even said that the way his father builds up his preach with musicians and grandiosity has inspired him to try out new things with his own music. Time for God to work. It's time for God to do his stuff. It's time for God to do his thing. Now, Weezer's first lineup consisted of Rivers Cuomo as guitarist and vocalist, Patrick Wilson on drums, Matt Sharp on bass, and Jason Cropper on guitar. The guy signed to Jeff and Records in 93 and recorded their debut album that was eventually released in 94. Weezer, or the Blue Album as people later started to call it, was a massive success and sold quadruple platinum both in the US and Canada. In just a few weeks and months, Weezer went from being an unknown band to becoming world stars. In interviews, Rivers was very open about how he freaked out when this happened. Obviously, he didn't know how to deal with the fame. I think I just got very freaked out by the whole process of becoming a star. After the band toured for about one and a half year, Rivers got really tired of playing the same songs over and over. 
he also got turned off from the rock star lifestyle. So when the band one day played a show in Boston, he spent some of his time walking around on the campus grounds of Harvard. He eventually came to the conclusion that he wanted to take time off and go to school instead. And so he filled out an application. It wasn't until we got off the road and then I was alone for, for a, a year when I was in school that I started to realize that actually I wanted to be a star and I want to take advantage of that opportunity and I want to have fun. In Christmas of 94, Rivers went home to record demos for the next Weezer album. His original idea was to create a space-themed rock opera about his hardships in dealing with fame. The project came to a halt in 95 after he was enrolled at Harvard and he became more inspired to write even darker and less playful music. Pinkerton was released in 96 and received poor reviews across the board. Most reviewers disliked the darker tone of the album and it was even voted to be one of the worst releases of that year. But the album grew on people as time went on and has since been acknowledged as one of Weezer's best albums. The immediate negative response really shook Rivers though. He had just decided to make the best of his role as a rock star, he had accepted his role, so to speak, and then he dropped what seemed to be his worst album ever. So for the next five years, he was struggling to write and release new material. In, in retrospect, it's hard to appreciate it, but it, it really seemed like we were done. Like there was no hope, was, we were a, you know, a one-hit wonder. In mid-97, the band went on hiatus because they simply didn't communicate well with each other. Rivers went back to Harvard and started a short-lived band with local Boston musicians. But in 98, Cuomo, Bell and Wilson reunited in Los Angeles to record their third album. A lot of creative disagreements and changes happened during this period, leading the recordings to a halt and Rivers into a state of depression. He painted the walls of his home black, put fiberglass insulation on his windows to not let any sunlight in. And uh, I, I said to the world, okay everybody, here I am, take it or leave it. And then everybody hated the record, so I, th I think I'm much more afraid and much more closed off. The time after Pinkerton was a huge slap in the face for Rivers. On that album, he basically put his feelings and thoughts out in the open for everyone to see, and people didn't like that. It was probably a moment where he was more fragile than ever, causing him to become even more brokenhearted and insecure. The reality was quite the opposite though. Despite of the immediate fall in the eyes of the music media, they did have a solid fan base. It was really hard for Rivers to see this, and if he did get a glimpse of this, he just couldn't accept it to be true. Just watch how he reacted when he got encouragement from an interviewer back in 2001. All these people believe in you, why can't you get the confidence now? I don't know either. I love playing music, I love writing songs, and that's, that's what I'm good at, that's what I want to do. And then when it comes to getting in front of a camera and talking about it, I know other musicians are, and those are the real stars, and they, they should be the one talking to you right now. Um, so I feel totally uncomfortable. But when they started to perform Green Album in 2001, he slowly started to realize that they did have a core fan base that loved them no matter what. And this is what gave him the confidence to go on and record and release it. For years I'd just been sitting in my bedroom and I was sure that everyone had forgotten about us. And then when we were driving to the Warp Tour, I didn't know what to expect. I thought people were going to hate us, but as soon as we came on the stage, everyone went crazy and it just made me feel so good. The majority of Weezer fans do agree on the fact that the Blue Album and Pinkerton were their absolute best albums. And that the albums that came after never reached that same peak of creativity and quality. But nonetheless, like I said before, they still have a huge fan base following them to this day. Now, in 2007, Rivers and his wife had their first child, their daughter, Mia. 
having a child changed the way Rivers wrote lyrics. He mentioned in an interview that the themes in particular changed a bit and that he was more willing to take risks from that moment onwards. It's opened up a new world of topics to write about because I don't have to write about, oh, I'm lonely anymore. He has attributed the continued success of his band and his willingness to have a family to him taking up meditation again. When the band worked on Make Believe, their fifth studio album in 2005, they were lucky enough to work with legendary producer Rick Rubin. Rubin was, and probably still is, a big believer in meditation as a pathway to strengthening one's creative faculties. And so ever since that time, Rivers was convinced that he needed to have a strict habit of meditation two hours per day, every day. But a thing that might have helped Rivers make peace with his unstable emotions even more was the fact that he developed an even deeper connection with his fans as time passed by. He's taken the time to collaborate, share, and even hang out with them. Back in 2008, he made a video on YouTube where he asked his fans to help him come up with a name for a song that he was making. Sure, not the biggest collaboration ever, but most other artists would reserve the right to name all their songs themselves. So this was a very altruistic move. This is where you guys come in. We need a song title. Another time, the band invited 100 of their fans to play with them. The fans were encouraged to bring their instruments, and it could be really any type of instrument. The plan was to play five to eight songs for two nights with a big fan group. The band gave the fans the set list of the songs they wanted to play and gave them a clear message to rehearse those songs. It turned out to be a hybrid between a show and a recording session. Personally, I really can't think of a better way to share the spotlight and their success with their fans than to have them as guest artists on a show and even a recording session. Now, Rivers definitely has a thing for random acts of kindness. And that doesn't only go for the times he spent with his band. From time to time, he'd arrange nerd nights. Basically, he would go on Twitter and ask, hey, does anyone want to go and see Shakespeare? Then he would buy 40 tickets to a Shakespeare play and invite people there. He basically treats his fans like potential friends and family by doing these things. Rivers Cuomo has changed a lot during his close to three decades in music. He went from being a metalhead to a rock star nerd singing about being lonely. Then he became famous and freaked out. He went back to school and became a real nerd again until he returned feeling more at ease with his fame. He then picked up meditation, started a family, and kept on making music with his band. Rivers Cuomo's story is to me a story about someone who struggled to accept the level of success he was destined to have. But as he grew older, he became mature enough to process it and returned to what he loved. He always returned to make more music. Thanks for watching. If you've ever wondered how I got 800,000 views on my first video essay with close to zero effort, then hit the link in the description below. I'm hosting a free live webinar at 3 p.m. Pacific time today where I'll teach you exactly how to do the same for free. There's a limit to 70 people in the webinar and it will be full, so make sure you click the link in the description now. Thank you so much for listening. Take care. Bye.